Texturing in Blender can get really hard sometimes because you need to deal with all sorts of nodes to even make a simple texture. In the previous video, I showed you how we can bring a lot of Substance features into Blender for free so the process gets much easier. And since that video did fairly well, I promise you guys to make a full tutorial on how to fully texture clothing using the same tool from scratch all the way to baking textures so you can use it anywhere you want. But before we start, make sure you check out my Gumroad and Patreon page to download all the 3D files and real-time process of making the characters from the channel link is down there let's do it we already made the jacket in the last video but in order to texture it we need to uv unwrap it one way would be to select the edges on the shoulders press u and click on mark scene then maybe switch to top view and select the halfway edges on the sleeves then from bottom of the sleeves to the bottom of the jacket do that to the other side as well after that press u again and mark scene Drag out a new window and change it to UV Editor. Press A to select all and U, then click on Unwrap to unwrap the UVs of the model. Now it's ready to be textured. For texturing, I'm gonna use a free add-on. Pause the video and go to the link in the description and download it. I have a full video about this add-on. I recommend watching that one first. We're gonna use the free version, but it also has a paid version where it has way more options and tools. It's a really good add-on. If you wanna buy it or just support the creator, you can do that here. Install the add-on from Edit, Preference, Add-on and click on Install. Press N to bring out the right menu, then click on Ravage. Click on Reset Material so we can begin. Now what do you have in mind? You wanna go Leather or Fabric? You can find that specific texture on Polyhaven or any other free texturing website. Once you downloaded it, the folder should look something like this. Back in Ravage, in the channels, enable any maps you see in there, like Roughness, Normal, Displacement, etc. Click on PBR Setup, select all of the maps you see on the folder and open. Now if we hold Z and go to Material Preview, we can see our maps at work. Mine is a leather jacket, but the details are way too big so we need to scale it up a bit. In the UV mapping section, hold click on X and drag down this way so we can change all of the values at once. Now if we scale it up, we get smaller details. To organize it a bit more, let's name the first layer main leather. It looks way too flat and unrealistic. We can fix that by a simple trick. Add in a cloudy overlay on the top of the leather. To add some variety to the colors, add a new layer and name it noise texture. In the channel section, we don't need most of these things, so turn them off. Scroll down and in the base color, click on this tree line icon and then image. We now have two options. We can go to Google and find some cloudy images like these and save it. But if you can't find a good one or you don't want to do that, we can make it ourselves. Drag out a new window and switch it to shader editor. Ignore this mess of the nodes here, we don't have to do anything to them. Shift A and add an image texture. Click on new and name it noise. We don't need a high number for the resolution. So click on OK. Shift A again and add an emission node. Add a noise texture and connect it to the emission. We're gonna use this node to create our cloudy texture. Connect the emission to the main shader so we can see it. If you haven't enabled the node wrangler yet, go to edit, preference, add on and find node wrangler. Now while the noise texture is selected, press Ctrl T and add the coordinates node, then connect the object to the mapping. The noises are too small, so let's decrease the scale so we get bigger noise texture. In the render settings, change it to cycles and scroll down to find the bake section. Change the bake type to emit so it projects the emission. Now while the image texture node is selected, click on bake to bake the noise texture to this image. After it's done, go to UV editing and you should see something like this. Go to image and click on save as. Save it somewhere so we don't lose it. We can now reconnect the main shader. Back to the add-on, in the base color, click on this folder icon to open up the texture we just baked. Put it on overlay so it makes up with the previous texture. You can see it improved from the basic leather color and it's now more believable, but it's a bit too intense. Let's tone it down by decreasing the opacity on the other side. This part is not necessary, but I added the HDRI map to see the jacket in a better lighting. In order to make it look more worn out, we have to add some highlights and shadows in some places. Leave only the base color because we don't need the others. Change the base color to image and create a new texture. Click on this icon to start painting. For its color, we can choose a 70-75% black. While fill tool is selected, click one time on the object. Since we're gonna add highlights, let's put it on overlay. Then using a small brush and a lighter color, start painting on the more exposed parts, like the bulge out parts and the folds.
I want to make it look more rusted and used. You probably already saw an old leather jacket, where it has all these cracks and rusty looking edges. To achieve that, let's add another layer for the rusted parts. Now it's time to find the rusted material, trying to find one that looks the same as your main material, but more rusted and old. I found this one, I think it would look good. Enable the necessary channels and open up the rusted PBR material like before. It's big, so increase the scale and once you reach the believable size, go to mask section and add a mask. Click on image and add a new texture. Click on the brush icon and start painting with a white color brush. Anywhere you paint is gonna be rusted and cracked. We're mostly gonna paint around the edges and the parts that are constantly getting folded because these parts have a higher chance of getting cracked and rusted over time by wearing the jacket. Just make sure the strength is not that high, so you have more control over the amount of rusted texture you're adding. Keep increasing and decreasing the brush size based on the parts that you're working on. In the UV editing tab, switch to the mask image and save it somewhere. Now we're gonna give a fabric material to the bottom of the sleeves and also the jacket's color. So find a good one and download it. We can add a new material in these type of situations, but in my case, new layer would be fine. So add a new layer, enable the main channels and open up the maps from the PBR button. Scroll down to the UV mapping, rotate the fabric so the textures line up with the direction of the jacket. Maybe increase the scale so we get smaller details. Then go to mask section and add a new texture. Texture. Name it Fabric Mask. Click on the brush icon to start painting. Using a white brush, we can start painting the parts we want it to be fabric. For now, we want the bottom of the jacket and bottom of the sleeves, so let's paint it. I'm also gonna make the color Fabric Materials, so let's paint this part too. After that, we're kinda done with the material. We still have to do the same thing for the top. Top is easy, cause it doesn't have any sleeves. We just have to separate it from the middle. In the UV editing tab, so it looks right. We want the both sides of the top to be at the same angle, cause if not, fabric texture wouldn't look right. So if it's not, just select that side, press R to rotate, then 90 on the number pad to rotate it 90 degrees. This fabric texture looked great, so I downloaded it. Clicked on reset material so we can start. Name it shirt. Enable the channels like always and open up the fabric material. Increase the scale a bit and that's basically it. I don't see a reason to work on it more. Select the jacket. In the shader editor, add an image texture. Click on new and name it diffuse. If you want to have the full detail, you want to go over the 4K resolution, meaning this number right here. It might take longer time to render, but it's worth it, since this way you get all the necessary details in the maps. Click on the number right here to duplicate the image too and name this one Roughness. Duplicate again, do the same thing and name it Normals. Duplicate another one for the displacement map too. Okay, now it's ready for baking. What I always do is connecting the maps to a mission because it usually runs into way less problems, at least in my experience. It's important to change the strength to 1 for it to work. In the render settings, scroll down and find bake. Change the bake type to emit so it bakes from a mission. Now drag another window out and change it to UV editor so we can see the results. Select the diffuse map from here and you see we have all these layers in one map. Go to image and save it somewhere. Moving on to the roughness, this time connect the roughness to the image. And again, when the roughness image texture and the jacket is selected, click on bake, then after a few minutes, save it. For the normals, we have to connect the mix RGB right here to the emission. Forget about all these purple notes, because these are not RGB maps. Select the normal image texture and jacket, then bake. For the displacement, we're also gonna ignore the purple notes, which are not RGB. After we baked all of the maps, we can get rid of these guys, cause we don't need them anymore. But of course, if you think you might wanna change it later, maybe keep it. It's not necessary to delete them. Move all of the texture we baked to the left side of the principal shader and start connecting. For the normals, don't forget to add a normal map node and connect them through that one. And for the displacement, add a displacement node and connect that one to the shader. You probably see nothing on the model. That's because we still haven't turned back the emission strength to zero. Decrease the displacement if it's too much. You are probably asking why the textures look low resolution. In the edit, preference, under texture, we got a limit size. This limits the resolution of the textures for better performance. 256 is a bit low, so let's increase it. Do the exact same thing for the top two. It's literally the same process. There's no reason to show it again. And this is it. You got a full clothing with really high quality baked textures that you can use basically anywhere with few clicks. Hope you find the video helpful. If you did, like and sub would be great. Check out the link in the description for the add-on and the real-time process videos of the jacket and lots of other characters on my Gumroad and Patreon page. See you on the next one. Peace.